yet, as you just said, police pulled barriers way back up to the base of the steps, and there's video we showed, and if we can show it again, where you will see there are folks scuffling with the uh, officers up close to these metal barriers, and then, I don't know if they say, screw it, and they're with the protesters, so they open them, or they feel like we're going to get overrun anyway, so they open them, but you literally see the officers help pull them open with the crowd as they rush through. So there's a lot of unanswered questions here to find out exactly what went down, and then who were those bad actors in the front of the group. Mr. Waller had said moments ago that he believes it was only maybe 30 to 50 strong as far as the first initial ones that were trying to break in. Is that kind of your assessment? I mean, it looked like the crowd then just followed in nice and peacefully after, but the ones that were at the top causing the most issue, there's video of folks screaming, they're Antifa, and people in MAGA hats trying to stop them from breaking in. Well, and I, I actually interviewed, Dan, uh, four or five patriots that came to our booth after, and we got the same intel, and they were directly there watching these 30 people, and I have it on video where there's literally, like, Trump supporters, patriots like us, Dan, like literally saying, don't break the windows, don't break the windows, what are you doing? And, and you know, it's the same thing I've seen when, when we've done these rallies all over the U.S. You can, you can kind of tell, you can tell in somebody's eyes that they have a certain look. Like, for example, we had a security team around us, we're walking up to the Capitol, and there's these guys that just look really like it's beyond military-like. They're dressed a certain way. And then our security guys like, hey, we need to get up ahead, Doc. Uh, these guys are carrying knives. I saw two knives on them. And and so it's just, it, it's interesting. It's really interesting. Cordy, where do you think we go from here? We have now a president-elect, Joseph Biden. We have a Democrat-controlled Senate and House. But we have 75-plus million Americans that are, pardon my French, pissed off and want answers. Um, final question, just a few seconds left with you. W where do we go from here? What do we do? Well, you know, it's one of those times, and some, some, of, the, some of our viewers aren't going to agree with me, um, but I kind of go with what General Flynn said Tuesday night and what he said before. I think Donald Trump, our beautiful, amazing, hardcore, rock-solid stud of a president, should invoke the Insurrection Act, and we get those, we, we need those machines. And then there's no ambiguity. I, 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 like, I, I, most of your viewers and, and, and my followers, uh, there's so much clear evidence about this. I mean, whether you just look at the amount of ballots that were sent out versus voters that there are in these states, that should be end of conversation. Um, so, you know, I hope he'll invoke the Insurrection Act. Otherwise, I think our republic just ended last night. I hope you're wrong. Uh, he has committed now to a peaceful transfer of power. So it appears that um, yesterday's fight, which senators and congressmen gave up on after the actions of a few, um, I don't know. I'm really at a loss for words. Cordy Williams, thank you for coming on the show. Stay safe, brother. God bless you, Dan. Semper Fi. God bless you. When we come back, looks like the mask police still exist out there. Wait till you see this viral video. A Huffington Post journalist harassing disabled veterans on a train while they were on the way to D.C. to that rally because they had their mask off while drinking coffee. You got to see this.